Hey, John here running you through a quick tutorial of how to set up a custom goal list. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, give a title to that this goal list. For the example, I'm going to do a service team list. So I'll put service team goals and then click this blue create goal list button. Now, it'll bring you first and foremost to this blank page. Um, here you can start creating the list. Uh, when you're getting started, uh, feel free to look at this section right under this smiling, uh, friendly guy here. It says Find Inspiration. If you click on this green button, you'll see we provided some uh, basic goals to cover different parts of your organization, from the leadership to the service team, um, even to the finance team. So come in here and check it out and see if there's a couple things that might be worthwhile and, and kind of fit your vision. Now, when you're ready to create your first goal, uh, you can either click this green create new goal button or you can click this plus sign here uh, in, the in the top right corner that says add a goal. And you can choose either a process or an outcome goal. Your outcome goals being your more long term uh, goals, your process goals being short term, something you're probably measuring weekly. Uh, a good example of an outcome goal might be, hey, I want to lose 20 pounds by the end of the quarter. Uh, a process goal would be, how am I going to lose those 20 pounds? Uh, let me run 15 miles a week. So my outcome goal would be 20 pounds by the end of the quarter. My process goal would be uh, running 15 miles a week. Uh, now let's start with an overall outcome goal for our service team here. And I think one that we can all agree with is measuring uh, customer satisfaction. So the first step is to come in here and select a gauge that you want to power this goal. And I'm going to type in CSAT because that's what I want to measure. And I see there's a CSAT quarter to date uh, gauge here. So I will name this average CSAT score and save it. And then now I want to add the actual goal. Uh, so I want my CSAT score to be greater than or equal to 95. Save that. And step three is where I'm going to assign this goal uh, to someone in my team. If someone gets assigned a goal, they will receive uh, an email every Monday morning reminding them to come in here and check into the goal um, and let us know if they have some context as to why they're meeting it um, or why they're falling a bit short. Now, being assigned the goal essentially just means this is the main person to have responsibility over the completion of this goal. Uh, in this case, since we're talking about a team-wide goal, Allison is one of our uh, supervisors, so I'm going to simply have the goal assigned to her. Now I'll click the green Add Goal button, and you can see that that populates here with a number from the gauge uh, that we selected to power this goal. Now, if you want to put a goal for an individual team member, you can come here to this gray plus button and select a process or outcome goal again, and go through the same process of selecting a gauge to power, um, to power this goal. Now, for some of you, depending on your data source connection, uh, you may have some default goal gauges already on your account. Uh, to check that, simply type in the word goal, and you can see here that on this account I do have some defaults, and I'm going to select the average times of resolution. I think bringing that down would be a good indicator um, of something that may improve my overall customer satisfaction score. Now I'll type in here average time to resolution. Save it. And I'm going to want to filter out this gauge uh, for an individual technician's data. Now, you may recognize this symbol from the dashboard filtering. Uh, if you click on it, you'll be able to select a field uh, to filter for. In this case, I'm going to use the resolved by field. And then you can select one of your technicians from the list provided. I'm going to use Steve for this example. And I'm going to give him a goal of less than or equal to 0.5 or 30 minutes for an average time of resolution. And then remember on step three, I'm going to want to assign that goal to Steve. So I gave him full responsibility. As long as Steve has a viewer account on, uh, on my bright gauge, then I can assign that goal to him. And I see that Steve does in fact have a viewer license. So I will assign the goal, click the green button. And you can see now that it populates here as well. Now, one more thing that might be helpful is hiring another service team member to help me improve this customer satisfaction score. However, that's something that's not necessarily tracked 
uh, via a gauge or even uh, you know by using numbers but that's okay uh, we can click this plus button do an outcome goal and you'll see in the bottom right corner it gives you the option to do a manually entered goal so if I select that button you can see that the number one now changes to a simple display name where I can write service team new hire and when I go to add a goal, since there's no numeric value to really judge how well I am doing with my progress of my new hire, uh, I will simply select skip target number. And I'm going to let Allison have that, that goal assigned to her because she's one of the supervisors and click the green add goal button. Now you can see that that additional team goal has been put here at the bottom. I can grab this and move it and pair it up with the team goal here at the top. Additionally, I can add a headers by selecting this more button and clicking add header so I can put team goals here and then I can put Steve goals now the header can also be moved just like the the goal rows um, so I'll move this down so I can separate Steve's goals from our team goals but still have them on the same page now, as mentioned earlier in the video, uh, when someone is assigned a goal, they, it is their responsibility on Monday mornings to come in and check in. You do that by simply click, clicking into the appropriate square. Now, when you click into the square, it will automatically take you to check in for the previous week's data. Now, I'm making this video midweek, so it's showing me last week's uh, date range. When you go and sign in and check in on Monday mornings, it'll obviously reflect that previous week's data, which is exactly what you want. But just in case you're doing midweek check-ins, make sure that you select the correct date range, which you'll see appear here. And then if you have too many decimal points or you need to change the numbers, you can always manipulate them here and provide some context and put uh, one bad review maybe. Check in. And you can see, since I did not meet that goal, it was below the 95, this square now appears in red. Since I changed the number slightly, you can see this little person icon appears in the bottom uh, left corner. And then because I provided some context saying one bad review, you can see these lines appear in the bottom left corner as well. If I wanted to go back and look at what I wrote here, I can click in and you can see that it provides me context here, one bad review. Now for the non-gauge powered, uh, goals to check in it's the same process you simply click in make sure you have the correct date range selected but instead of uh, having any numbers available here in the bottom part of the module you'll just select off track on track or once you've completed it you can select that or if maybe this was a quarterly goal and the quarter came to an end we didn't hire anybody we can mark that off as missed um, in this case I can write on track click check in and when I come out you can see that this square, because I am on track, is now appearing in green. Now, I hope that this makes sense. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to our support team at support at brightgage.com.